Hey, it's Joanne Musa, of the Tax Lean Lady. This is Ask the Tax Lean Lady Live, where I get to answer your questions about investing in tax liens or tax deeds. So when you come on, now I'm on StreamYard. This is being streamed into my business page, my Facebook business page. So uh, just say hello. Let me know where you're from, where you're uh, coming in from, and, and where you're investing, what state you're investing in, because tax lien and tax deed investing is so different in every state. As a matter of fact, uh, our newsletter is going to go out today, our November newsletter. This newsletter is all about bidding at the tax sale. And um, in that newsletter, I talk about some of the differences. <laughs> There's a lot of differences in, in uh, different states when it comes to bidding. Um, so uh, uh, just say hello when you get here. Um, and here's the thing, the replay is gonna be right here on Facebook, on my Facebook page when we're done. So if you didn't get to listen to it live and you're watching the replay, uh, hello to you and uh, welcome. And, and what you can do is just comment and leave your question in a comment and I can answer it for you next time. And we didn't really get any questions ahead of time today, or at least I didn't see any questions ahead of time. Uh, if you did give me questions and I didn't see them, I will answer them next time. My assistant, Nicole, isn't with me today to feed me the messages, <laughs> okay? Um, but here's what I wanna do. I just, because, you know, we're coming up to the holidays, Black Friday is coming next week, right? And I'm gonna have some great Black Friday sales for you. But what I see happening now are, you know, these um, people that uh, try to get you to watch these, hour long videos before they tell you what they're actually selling, okay? And they make tax lien investing sound so good. Now, look, um, I'm a very trusted uh, authority on tax lien investing and, and teacher on uh, tax liens and tax deeds. And that is because I do not tell people what they wanna hear. I tell it like it is. Okay, but there are other people out there who do not tell it like it is. They're going to tell you what you want to hear, what they need to tell you to suck you in. All right, so I just want you to be aware of some things that I see that I don't agree with. Okay, one thing, uh, there's people that use other words. They don't want to use the word tax lien investing or tax lien certificates. Uh, tax lien certificates so they'll use other words to get you in and they'll make it sound like hey you could get checks every couple of weeks yes you can get checks every couple of weeks from tax lien investing but what they're not telling you is that well if you want to get checks in every couple of weeks you better constantly go to tax sales all right because see you get paid when the delinquent uh, property owner decides to redeem the lien well, either you've got to go out and buy a lot of tax liens if you want to get uh, checks every couple of weeks from investing in tax liens, okay? And, other, and some people call it different things. I've heard it called uh, tax yield profits or, um, you know, they might use different words for it. But what they really mean is a tax lien uh, or tax certificate. And they're called different things in different states. They could be called um, a, a, a tax sale certificate or a tax lien certificate, but it's the same thing, all right? It is a document, it's a physical document that's um, notarized and usually stamped <laughs> that is uh, a confirmation that you have a lien on a property. Now it has to be recorded. Now I will tell you there's differences in different states. Some states don't give you a certificate, right? And, and then you don't have to record it, of course. So every state is different and you have to know the rules, right? And that's another thing. Some people make it sound like it's so easy. It is not difficult, it, 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 but there is some work involved. It is not totally passive income, all right? There is some work involved and the guarantee uh, that you're going to get paid because uh, this is the other thing that I, I hear people throw out the term government guaranteed. And 
And some people hear that and they think it means they're guaranteed to get paid on a tax lien. That is not what that means. It means that the rate of return that you get is uh, uh, guaranteed by gov government law, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get paid. Okay. Um, what is your guarantee is the real estate. So you have to do your due diligence on the real estate to make sure the real estate is good, right? Because that, because here you have um, a lien on real property, okay? And that's the difference between a speculative investment where you really don't have anything. <laughs> you might just have a piece of paper, but that's all it is. There's nothing real backing it up. Like you don't owe shares in the company that you have um, stock in, okay? <laughs> And the shareholders are going to get paid a lot before you do, right? But here you are in first position with a tax lien, you are in first position to get paid, okay? So, but what I see, what uh, here's another thing that really it gets to me. People will tell you how much money you could make with tax liens, and they'll just give you examples of, oh, uh, so and so made, um, you know, a couple of thousand dollars. They got a check for a couple of thousand dollars. But what they're not telling you is that check that they received from the uh, treasurer, from the county treasurer, that was principal and interest that they got back. So that means most of that money they had to invest in order to get it back, right? So what you can do is, hey, you can make 12% on, I've made 18% on my money, 12% on my money. Um, that's what I, I, I like to get like 12 to 14% on my money. But hey, sometimes I get less. Is that okay? Yeah, sure, it's okay. Because if my money was in the bank, in a savings account, um, the best that I see right now in a savings account is 4.25% in an online bank. All right. Now, I know I can do better than that with tax liens. All right. However, um, and, and uh, here's another thing. Here's another thing that I see people do is uh, tell you that, oh, it's so easy to do the over-the-counter uh, certificates. You don't have to go to the tax sale. Just get the leftovers from the county and you could get the maximum rate. You don't have to bid at the sale. Um, that's that's true, except what they're not telling you is that there's nothing good left over. <laughs> yes, the tax sales are so competitive today. And that's why they say, oh, there's so much left over. Just get the leftover stuff. But there's not so much left over anymore. And what is left over are junk properties. Let me tell you, I was just at a tax sale last week. There were two properties that I didn't, I had on my bid sheet not to bid on. One of them had an environmental problem, and I forget what the what the reason was on the other one that I did not bid on. They were sold at the sale. They were sold. They did not go over the counter. There was nothing in that sale that went to the uh, township. In this case, it was a New Jersey sale. So it, the municipality gets it if it doesn't sell at the sale. But you know what? Even if it did, that municipality does not sell their leftovers. Not too many in New Jersey do. It's like an act of God to get them to do it. Okay. They've got to jump through a lot of hoops in order to do it. So there's only certain places that do that. And the places that do uh, years ago, 20, 30 years ago, it was a viable strategy. But today, it is not. It is not a strategy that I do or that I teach to my coaching clients. Okay, because it is, um, it, it, it's difficult to do right. You can't wait a few months after the sale and go get the leftovers. There's going to be nothing good left. There might have been like maybe one or two good properties get on that leftover list, but you've got to be there as soon as it's published right after the sale. You have to know what gets on that list and be there to grab it up. Okay, because there's a lot of people who there's people who do this regularly and that's exactly what they do. All right. So don't think that it's any less competitive than bidding at the tax sale. As a matter of fact, that is my number one way that I like to get 
tax liens is by going to the sale. I like live sales and online sales. Hey, sometimes uh, I do better in the online sales and sometimes I do better in the live sales. It just depends on what time of the year it is, um, what state it is. Hey, there's some states where there's only li uh, uh, online sales and there's some states where there's only live sales. So it's just a matter of picking the right one to go to. Okay, so I see a couple people have come on. Um, just let me know where you're coming in from. This is Ask the Tax Lean Lady Live, where I get to answer your questions. You get them answered live by me about investing in tax liens or tax deeds. And if you missed the first part of this, I just had a rant <laughs> of some things that I see happening now that I don't quite agree with because, hey, I tell it like it is. I don't always tell people what they want to hear. Hey, Rodney from Dallas, Texas. Well, you know, Texas is a redeemable deed state and they have tax sales there once a month. Their next tax sale in a lot of the counties, um, the counties that have sales every month, not every county has a sale every month, but the larger counties like Dallas do. And it's always on the first Tuesday of the month. So the first Tuesday in December, there will be a tax sale. However, I will tell you, that Dallas County is not a good place to invest because it uh, the, the competition there is fierce. So what I would do is I would go to the out of the way places in Texas, to the out of the way counties and invest there. And here's the thing, you could do it live and you could do it online now because there are a few counties in Texas that have online tax sales and some of them are those smaller counties. OK, smaller out of the way county. So you can invest online and in maybe a county because Texas, let's face it, Texas is a huge state. Um, so you can invest online in a county that's far away from where you live. And you could also invest in a county that's not too far away from where you live and go to the live sale because most of the sales in Texas are live. Yeah, there's a, there's a few that are online, but most of them are live. Well, it's good to have you here live, Rodney. Thanks for coming and let me know, what is your question? What is your biggest question or the biggest thing that is holding you back? If you haven't invested yet, have you been to any tax sales in Texas? What can we help you with today? Okay. And if you missed my rant, <laughs> you could just listen to the replay when we're done. All right. Um, Okay, and I will tell you that if you're not on my list, you want to get on my list. I'm not going to put any, I'm not going to give you any links to do it right now uh, because I did have a little uh, technical difficulty with my website today. So I'm waiting for that to get resolved. And then I'm going to send my newsletter out. Um, and I will, I will put the links in the comments. Uh, when I'm done, but I'm not going to put them in now. I want to wait until the um, website situation is resolved today. So uh, for anybody that has gone to my website and, and there's a problem, uh, no worries. We're getting it taken care of. Okay. All right. So who else has joined us? Where are you coming in from? And what can I help you with today? Yeah, we have more people coming on too. So say hello. Let me know who you are and what I can help you with today because I am here to answer your questions about investing in tax liens and tax deeds. Okay. All right, Rodney, how do I actually sign up online to attend the online tax sales? What are three of the biggest red flags to look out before buying a tax lien or tax deed. Okay, and Good Deals is from Arizona, hi. Um, Arizona tax liens are gonna be going on in February. And I do have a training specifically for the Arizona um, tax liens. Again, I'm not gonna put the link in now because um, last time I checked, there was a problem with my website that we're getting worked on right now. Um, but I will put that link in the comments for you guys later. Uh, so, okay, so, um, so I'll let you know about that Arizona training. And Rodney, to sign up to attend the online tax sales, um, they are on realauction.com. All right. 
I currently have an advanced tax lien investing secrets training going on now where I actually uh, coach people weekly for eight weeks and show them exactly how to register for the sale and bid at the sale. Okay, but uh, I do have um, I do have a workshop on Texas. I don't think we did that in the workshop though. But I do have what I do have is a uh, a training for redeemable deeds, a workshop for redeemable deed investing. Now, here's the thing, Rodney. People who are members of the Tax Lien Profits Accelerator, which is my members area, they get access to all my workshops for free. Okay, now, and for um, Black Friday, I'm going to be having a big sale <laughs> on membership. Okay, so I'll be letting people know about that on Thanksgiving Day next week. All right, so you want to make sure you get on my list, and I will put in the comments later a uh, link to my website. And here's how you get on my list on my website, taxleanlady.com. Um, if you go there now, there might be a problem with the uh, SSL, the security. I renewed my SSL for the site, but they didn't apply it until I called when I when I noticed the problem. And they did fix it, but they said that it could take a few hours for it to populate across all my websites. So, um, so if you go there and, and there's a problem, just come back later and it'll be fixed. But when you do go to taxleanlady.com, right on that page, there's a sign up form for my uh, my guide, my state guide, Tax Lean Lady's state guide. And when you sign up for that, you'll get on my list. You'll get a newsletter, which is going to come out later today, the November newsletter. All right. And so getting back to your question, Rodney, because you actually had two questions about where to find the online sales. And for Texas, most of them are on real auction. But here's the thing. Some of the counties that have online sales in Texas have their own site or it's on a different site. OK, um, how I find about that is I use a tool called Tax Sale Finders. And this is something that I make available to my members. Again. I'm going to have a big sale on membership uh, on for for Black Friday. Um, so it, you want to make sure that you get on my list and keep your eye on your in mail uh, uh, for um, uh, on your inbox for messages from me next week because they'll uh, it'll start on Thursday on on uh, Thanksgiving. All right. And it'll be over on Monday, on Cyber Monday. <laughs> so so you want to take advantage of that when you can. Uh, but your other question was, what are three of the biggest red flags to look out for before buying a leaner deed? Um, now, in Texas, you're actually buying the property. OK, and you're actually considered the owner of the property, even though if it's a redeem, even though it is a redeemable deed. OK, in Texas is the only redeemable deed state like this. You are considered the owner of the property, but the previous owner still has a right of redemption. Um, a, the right of redemption is only six months for non-homesteaded properties, and it's two years for homesteaded properties. OK. Um, what you can do is target land. OK, but you still um, you still have to wait uh, six months for that for the ability for the owner to redeem it to go away okay um so what three things do you what are red flags to look for before buying a lien or a deed if there's any prior tax well for a lien specifically um not necessarily for a redeemable deed because you won't really find this on redeemable deeds or deeds but for liens if there are prior tax liens on the property that could be a little red flag OK, now, if you're buying a deed or redeemable deed, I suggest you look at the property because especially in Texas, you are actually the owner of the property when you when you purchase that. All right. So and, you know, when you say what are the three biggest red flags? Well, that kind of also depends on where it is. It depends on the state. Like here where I am in Pennsylvania, it's a rural area and there are no um, uh, sewers or public water. So everybody has to have a septic and a well. 
So if the land is too rocky or if it's on too much of a grave or if it's not the right size, you can't put in a septic and, and a well. Uh, so it wouldn't be buildable. So one of the things if you're looking at land is you want to make sure it's buildable. OK, um, the other thing that I look for is the if there is an environmental risk. OK, and again, uh, my members and I use something called tax sale finders that tells us this. Um, and again, that's where for the. Uh, the counties in Texas that are not on real auction, how do we find out where they are? Well, because tax sale finders tells us what's coming up all around the country. And we can even look and see where these, where these sales are held. Okay, so um, I've told you about a couple of red flags to look for. And again, I said it depends on where you are in the country. In some areas of the country, you've got things like water rights. You might not in desert areas, you've got to make sure you have water rights if you're building on land or if, if you're bidding on land rather, <laughs> okay? Because you won't be able to build on it if it doesn't have water rights, okay? Um, Okay, so there's a few things that you look at. I always look at the assessed value and the market value of the property. All right, and Mark is asking, is there a difference in redemption period when buying deed for land versus a house? Uh, different requirements in each state like Georgia, Tennessee, North Carolina, South Carolina. Um, the difference in Texas doesn't matter if it's a land or a house. What matters is whether it's homesteaded or not. So it could even be a house and it's a six month redemption period if the owner doesn't live there or even if the owner lives there but hasn't done a homestead exemption. Okay, that's the difference. So there's no difference really if it's land or, or if it's a house. Each state has its own redemption period regardless. Okay, uh, the only difference in some lean states is that I know in New Jersey and there might be other lean states like this, um, you can uh, foreclose earlier. You, so the redemption period can be shorter if, um, if it's a blighted property, if the municipality has a, a distressed property list or a blighted property list. These are properties that they really want to turn over. They want somebody to take care of them. Um, they're vacant properties, but they're on that list. And then it will have a six month redemption period instead of a two year redemption period. Okay. But um, that's not something I've seen in redeemable deed states. I don't know if it exists in any of those states. North Carolina is deeds not redeemable deeds, South Carolina and Georgia are both redeemable deeds. And it might be on a county by county basis. You could check with the county and see if they have anything like that. But I've only actually seen that in lean sales, okay, in states that have lean sales. Um, there's also sometimes states have different, have properties in their sale with different redemption times, not based on whether it's land or whether it's a house on it. That, doesn't have much to do with it. It's based on how long it's been uh, in the county records, how long that property has had unpaid taxes. So in other words, for um, some places that if it's been in the sale, if it's come up, uh, I believe South Carolina does this, if it's been in the sale for a couple of years, they will shorten the redemption period, okay? Indiana does that too. As a matter of fact, Indiana has two different sales. If you buy it, uh, there are sales right now going on in Indiana. I think they, they might be over. They have sales in the fall. Um, that Those are their main tax lien sales. And then if it doesn't get sold in that sale, it gets it gets certified to the county commissioner and it's sold in the spring sale in the what they call the commissioner sale or is sometimes it's referred to as the tax certificate sale. Now, if you buy it in that sale, the redemption period is shortened to only four months. Okay, but usually when there's a difference in the redemption period, it doesn't have much to do with whether there's a house on it or not. It has to do with 
how long it's been unpaid, how long it's been on the tax roll unpaid. And, um, and there was one other thing that I was thinking of that it has to do with, uh, and it slipped my mind <laughs> and I don't remember it. Um, oh, if it's a blighted property or not, pretty much land does not get to be a blighted property. Those are usually houses that get to be a blighted property and only in places that do that. Not every place does that. All right. Um, great question. Great question, Mark. Any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, I'm here to answer whatever questions you have about investing in tax liens or tax deeds. So uh, I will be here. Um, uh, now, Thursday, I do a tax lien investing tip inside the private group. We have a private Facebook group. It's free to join. Uh, it is at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash tax lien investing success. That link I will put in for you into the comments. Hold on. I think I can do that here. And all you have to do to join is answer some questions. We, will, we just want to make sure that you're joining because you're interested in learning about tax liens and that you're not there to solicit our members. We have over a thousand members in that uh, group. Okay, still typing this in here for you. It's at um, Tax Lean Investing Success. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in now. Okay, all right, so I put the link in there for the Facebook group, if anybody is interested in the group, I do a tip in there every Thursday. Now, this Thursday, I have a tax sale to go to. So um, I might be doing it from the road and it might be real quick because if I get any liens at this sale, I have an hour to go to the bank, which is about a half an hour away or 20, at least 20 minutes, 20, 25 minutes away. So I have to run to the bank, get, a certified check and then come back in an hour. So I got to be really quick. Now the tax sale is not until 11 o'clock. All right. So if I get liens at this sale, I might be doing that tip a little bit later than 12. Normally I do it at 12 o'clock Eastern time on Thursday. Now I won't be doing it next Thursday because next Thursday is Thanksgiving. All right. But keep your eye on your inbox next Thursday for information about that Black Friday sale. I actually have a few um, things for you that I've not offered before at, at this these discounts. Okay, and there's something for everybody, whether you just want one of my workshops or you want to get into the membership. Um, you know, up to 50% off on stuff that I that I haven't really offered this type of savings on before. Or if you want coaching from me. All right, there's something for everybody in that uh, Black Friday Friday special that we'll be doing um, next week from Thursday through Cyber Monday. Okay. All right. So any other questions? Any other questions? Before I end today's Ask the Tax Lean Lady Live, thank you for showing up. And, you know, please let me know uh, if this is helpful for you. And if you want me to continue doing this, come back with your questions, okay? Because it's no fun if I, if I come on here and um, nobody, has, nobody has any questions to answer. All right. And if you missed the first part of this Facebook Live, I had a rant um, about what to watch out for, about really the truth about tax lien investing and what to watch out for. Because, because it's Black Friday coming up, there's a lot of people out there now um, trying to get your business. And, you know, some, uh, some, some of us are ethical and some stretch the truth a little bit, let's say, right? 
but uh, uh, I'm known as the most trusted authority on tax lien investing in the US and that's because I don't tell you what you wanna hear. I am gonna tell it like it is. As a matter of fact, I am going to tax sales this week. Uh, this week I have, um, I've already been to one live sale and we have about three or four online sales to go to and I'll be doing at least one more live sale this week for the fund that I invest for. And I will let you know how it goes. Now, I did not buy anything at the sale that I was at um, yesterday, yesterday morning. And I didn't buy anything because I felt that too much money was paid for these liens. Uh, there was one lien that went at 18%, and that was one lien that I had on my sheet not to bid on. I forget what exactly the problem was, but, um, but it wasn't good. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, that that is my take. Um, but here's the thing. Part of uh, the secret to success is just showing up. You've got to show up to bid at these sales. Now, what I did do at that sale, I didn't buy anything, but I made a note of what got sold and what it got sold for. OK, so that I can go back and actually see how much people are paying for these liens, how much they're really getting, what kind of uh, profit, what they're really getting. Of course, you have to make some assumptions if it's held for a year. Uh, there's a two year redemption period in New Jersey. So these are New Jersey sales. And we just assume, OK, if we get to pay all the subsequent taxes and it's held for a year, how much money are we going to make? All right, and so that's what I'll do with the competition. I'll figure out how much money they're actually making. And then I know uh, how much I have to bid in order to get a property and I can figure out, is it worth it or not? And when I go to future sales and I see these other bidders showing up, I kind of know what they're after. And I can go, now the problem with the sale that I was in yesterday and the reason why one of the reasons i didn't get anything is there was no good land in that sale and i like to target land because properties with houses on them or commercial there was a good commercial property on there too an apartment building but stuff like that is very competitive so i like to focus on land i get better rates on land um but there was none the there was land on the original list and you know what? That's what got paid off before the sale. That's what got redeemed or paid off before the sale. So it wasn't even in the sale. Okay. Um, okay. So that's that's what I have for you today. And I next week is Thanksgiving week. So I'm not sure if I'll be here or not, but I will let you know. We'll post it here on the page and let you know if we're going to be here next week. And if, uh, um, yeah, we'll let you know when we're going to be uh, back again, because I'm not sure which, uh, which week we're taking off, either the Tuesday before Thanksgiving or the Tuesday after Thanksgiving. All right. So I'll see you again. Bring your questions and I'll answer them for you here. All right. Have a prosperous 2023.